time again for Seth home to join us and talk about what's happening. Really exciting stuff. Seth, go ahead. Tell us what you got going on today. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Let's talk uh, truckload earnings season. So uh, Q3 earnings are about to kick off here. I've been reading a lot of notes uh, from Wall Street on kind of what their thoughts are going into the quarter. Uh, some good themes emerging here. Overall, the, the common theme is basically it's uh, so bad, it's good. So the first thing that uh, everyone is universally pointing out is that uh, they're expecting uh, misses and guide downs. And we saw that yesterday with the biggest carrier in the market. Uh, but you know, overall, in their opinion, that's actually a good thing because they think that 2020 is a trough EPS year that's developing here. And then the second main thing that they're pointing out is if 2020 indeed is a bottom and a trough year, then because these are cyclical stocks, you should get a, sort of a peak multiple. And a peak multiple for a trucking stock is sort of upwards of 20 times earnings. And meanwhile, these things are kind of trading in the bottom quartile and well below those five-year averages. So it looks like a lot of upside from a valuation perspective. And you could get some earnings upside uh, looking into the back half of 2020. Now, um, the other thing a lot of these guys were talking about is, you know, trucking stocks you really want to buy when things are really ugly and things couldn't look any worse. Um, now, we've probably passed that period. That was probably April or May for trucking. But we got a long way to go. Spot rates are still down meaningfully year over year. A lot of analysts think those are going to inflect positively in the second half of 2020. Uh, and then UBS touched on the fact, we talked uh, last week about the ISM uh, being at 47.8. That's recessionary. That's actually not a bad thing for trucking stocks because they tend to lead the market on the way down. So when you get a reading like that historically, a year later, trucking stocks are up like 12% on average. Let me ask you a question. Is this a extreme panic or is it a relaxed caution in terms of hedge funds or even inside of the trucking organizations themselves? Uh, I think it's uh, a calm panic. Is that the term you use? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I, I don't think it's a big deal. Basically, everything hinges on the consumer. So everyone who had a positive developing view of the trucking market basically hedged by saying this all depends on the U.S. consumer. And so I have a couple other points there on that that, that may be worth touching on. So. Uh, first off, we just got the September uh, retail sales this morning. It was a little bit disappointing. It was down 0.3% month over month. That's the first time that's happened in seven months. So a lot of people are worried that if you start to see those cracks in the consumer, we talked about it over the last week or two here, uh, that is one that's building. So I don't think we're at an alarming rate yet, but we're starting to see them build. You just don't want to see them piling up with red flags. And then Morgan Stanley pointed out two others this week that I think are interesting. So first off, they noted, um, so a lot of people say, well, the housing market is extremely healthy, right? You, uh, so you have tight lending standards, you've got high FICO scores, uh, you've got very low delinquencies and defaults, but what that isn't measuring is that 28% of the U.S. consumers that are low income, they're being squeezed out by those tight lending standards and they're having to rent and we're seeing a lot of inflation in rental prices and that's kind of crimping those budgets. And then the second thing they called out was, so subprime auto loans are actually running above the peak that we saw in the credit crisis from a delinquency and default perspective. So when you pair that with the retail sales and those two things, you are starting to see a few more red flags on the consumer front. But overall, we think they'll be continue to be strong. Now, do you think this skews towards the lower income consumer sector or does it encompany, encompass the entire uh, consumer broad? So that's the point they were making. They were saying that this could be early warning signs, a kind of a canary in the coal mine was the term they used that, that spreads elsewhere. For right now, uh, high income consumers are pretty good. Other than luxury items, you know, a lot of that has gets caught up in the China trade war, but overall the middle and high end consumer with unemployment at three and a half percent, kind of a 50 year low, everything looks pretty good. Seth, thanks so much. A relaxed calm leading into the future. As always, thanks so much for watching Freightways Now. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and we'll see you tomorrow.